tops of Charisse. Not on top of your game, Eugene. At least I'm not breaking cups. Hey, hey, hey. Charisse. You have no proof that that happened. You just told me. You don't have it on tape. Oh, my God. In this office, if it's not on tape, it didn't happen. How are things going? Pretty good. That's it. That's all I got for you. That's all you got? It's not exciting when life is good. You know, it's not dramatic. Uh, I'm disagree. going to Japan. I'm. That's basically yeah, what I'm going for. Again? January 3rd. I'm very, very excited. So 20 more days. 20 more days. That seems, still seems like a, a while away. Yeah, three weeks. Um, that's pretty much all I'm hanging in I would like for. to bring up an issue. Yeah. The fact that you're not letting me talk about what I want to talk about. I'm making it up. Actually, yesterday, I gave you a chance. Yesterday, I said, do you want to pick this for your topic? And you said, no. And then this morning, morning, you're like, I want to talk about it. And I was like, no. What topic is it? Eugene thinks that it would be a really great idea if Apple did a hardware subscription model. Correct. And it's in the making briefing. And... I feel we should yes, talk about it. It was in Tuesday's Megan briefing. Well, we're talking about it right now. All you right, I'm going to switch. I'm, you conned me yes. into it. All right, last minute switch. I'm going to switch my topic. We're going to so talk. so conniving. But I think that I'll frame it in a way where. This podcast have, has evolved, evolved uh, so much. There's a lot of mental, mental warfare at play here. <sighs> okay, all right. Are we going to get right into it? Are we going to? We're really going to do it. Well, I mean, I suppose. Give the people what they want, right? In this case, you But I also think it's a Eugene really interesting topic. Okay. All right. Let's talk about it. No, hold on. What? Anything else that's going on? Oh, before we jump into it. So one of the things that I discussed earlier in one of the intros of the making briefing either this week or last week on Friday was just the topic of community, creative community in Asia. Mm-hmm. And I just wanted to, I want to talk a little bit more about it. And I think it's an interesting topic because- Sharice and I have been throwing around the idea of putting together, well, first the idea was to do a freelancer Christmas mixer, whatever you want to call it. And I thought it was interesting because some people don't have a Christmas party to go to. To yeah. be honest, the this year's making party planning committee is behind in terms of Actually, planning. if I did not even realize we were doing an office party. I think we need to party. do one. We're doing a separate well, I don't know. Thing? I don't know. I'm should we do a gift exchange? Mm, yeah. Dude, I heard about this brilliant idea. Sorry, this is totally derailing what you wanted to say. I heard about this brilliant idea where everyone actually has to bring the most crap gift they can yeah. for under fifty dollars. Uh oh. I just thought of something. Anyway. I can't talk about it on air. We can think about it. All yeah. right. But anyways, um, yeah, we were talking about it. I think two things come into play. When you're quote unquote building community, which is a very sort of cliche, like, oh, it's all about community, but actually building it takes work and time. And what does that look like? Yeah. Right. And I think there there needs to be a sense of consistency and someone just needs to drive home the narrative when the narrative is yet to crystallize and be understood. So I think that's kind of what's interesting to me as I start um, exploring what that means and trying to figure out a way for two related parties. I think the the challenge becomes how do you connect two separate parties that actually have more in common than they think and bring them together, you know? And I think that's one of the interesting things. Like I, I mentioned it in the intro. It's like you're at a point in time where creative culture in Asia is just not that well established. I would say creative culture in sort of the greater China region is not that well established. So how do you find a way to bring everyone that's on that same path together? Because they're kind of walking side by side, potentially at I different think rates. I want to clarify is there are lots of creative people in Hong Kong and China and Asia. And what you and I kind of identify is that it's the culture and community that's lacking. So there's a lot of independent photographers, artists, designers, et cetera, doing great things on their own, but they might not really be coming together. And particularly, there's a bit of a rift between maybe... I think rift art. is the wrong word. Rift seems like it's a yeah, lot of you're right. friction. It's not, it's not intentional. There's yeah. They've just been operating separately, Exactly, I would say. They're different circles operating separately. Correct. So find a way to bring them together. And I think it's... Even if we do one event, it's not about expecting one event to be the catalyst of this massive change. It's like you really have to stick to it Mm -hmm. let's jump into it i feel there's a lot to talk about so we're really doing yeah 
Okay, go for it. You're first. Wait, I'm starting first? Yeah. If all you right, don't, all right, let's I won't lead. even be able to concentrate on my Let, topic. Let's lead. So my, my topic is, what would happen if Apple turned into a hardware-based subscription service? So we're currently at an age or a point in time where people are shying away from ownership, right? It's just sort of like on-demand services. Mm -hmm. So that could be anything from your car to what else? What are other examples? Cars come to mind. Um, watches. Watches. That's one thing too. People are like... There are subscription models for watches? Yeah. Basically, you can rent or be part... You can subscribe to the service and you get a new watch every month to try out. Like, they're obviously used watches, but, you know, it's allows you to, to wear things that maybe you wouldn't be able to afford. There's formal wear options as well. Yeah, 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 exactly. So I think this is something interesting. Um, it's a, it's a topic worth exploring because for me personally, I, I think that especially with technology, things move so quickly, it would make total sense to do it. Obviously, yesterday when I brought this up, it was very polarizing. People were like, yo, that's a stupid idea. Yeah, no, I don't think anyone in this office uses language like that. Excuse yo, this is you. a stupid ass idea. Excuse you. Nobody says that All here. Right. Um, but no, let me let me kind of go through it. Yes, I think go, I got go too, it too caught up go with everything else. So the best way I would describe it is just let's let's put some hypothetical parameters around it. Uh -huh. Right. And I think that's the context of this discussion is let's not say, oh, if it's like this, it's definitely gonna fail. It's more like the actual premise behind it and work through that. Because I'm, I'm trying I, really hard. I know what you want me to do. You yeah. want me to imagine this ideal subscription service. I would service. want you to also put your own parameters and guardrails and be like, hey, I would definitely I would definitely subscribe to okay. this. Okay, describe the hypothetical plan. All right. So imagine if you could lease the whole gamut of Apple products. You'd get Apple Care and insurance thrown in for comparison's sake or just to have like a price range. Let's just say that for every $100 retail value of an item, it would cost you two bucks. So if you want access to a MacBook and below, MacBook's what, three grand? Yeah. So let's like say- Like top of the line. Top of the line, three grand, Mac, Mac, MacBook Pro. Mm -hmm. Say um, that's three grand. So let's say 60 bucks a month. Let's yeah. use that as a, as a starting point. So why would Apple do this? I think one of the big things are monthly recurring revenue, which wait, is really wait. important. We're also talking about why I think there's a lot of reasons why Apple would do this. Yeah, let's just talk about it. I can see it. it from that perspective. Yeah. Like monthly recurring revenue, that's a lot easier well, to model one of out. My, it's funny because now we're skipping past the pros to cons. No, we're going to go to the my, pros and cons at the end. One of my cons is the creation no, no, should... of dependency, but from Apple's perspective, that is a good thing. From my perspective, I don't want to have that company can I don't want to it's so ironic because all your products are in. apple I know but I don't like even, why trick yourself I'm not tricking myself so much as I think it's good to have be a step removed okay let's run through these okay yeah, well, anyway we're talking about dude, this Apple's is heated dependency. I, just this not, is it's heated. Not, I don't think it's it, the reason it's heated is because we've already been talking about this all over right. the last 24 hours all right so what are the pros and cons Okay, Pros. so the pro that I am the this convinces me the most is that it provides greater access to people who already do not have the means to buy a new MacBook Pro or an iPhone 10. Yeah. And just to be totally honest, I I don't fall within that category, right? Like with some saving and some smart financial planning, I could buy a new machine and new phone. Yeah. But I understand there are a whole bunch of people who that's like not even something they think about yeah. uh, just and a plan before like you that could make it possible go before we go deeper do you think that there's something to be said that if you can't afford it you don't you shouldn't have access to it no i'm just no that was, i just wanted to throw that no there. i think this is that was the most compelling thing to me mm -hmm. is that it suddenly opens up opportunities for people who who don't even think about the possibility because for me it, I, I am fortunate, and for both of us, we're fortunate to be able to pick whatever products we want, right? And then what you are arguing for about having access to more Apple machines is the ability to create, right? Yeah. And I would love for youth in particular, but anyone who can't afford a machine to make the videos that they want to then be able to do that. Yeah, yeah. I agree too. I think that's one of the most important things and... Um, you know, the ability to upgrade, downgrade, whatever it may be. Like, obviously, the, this is us just talking through the underlying idea. But as I've, I've, I've mentioned before, when you're, 
when your product gets a little dated, it becomes very difficult to create content, whether it's a computer, whether it's a phone. You know, I was always complaining like my 6S, which isn't even that old of a phone. Like it, I can't really do anything with it. Yeah. So you kind of need to be on a certain product cycle tip for you to actually have access to the means to My argument against that was that I am not someone who always wants the newest released item. But why don't you want it? Sometimes it's not better in my opinion. And I think the MacBook Pro is the best example for that. We talked about this MacBook on this podcast before yeah. about how the 2015 MacBook Pro is the best. And I've shared I've shared a link with yeah. someone. Yeah. And I, no, I, I fully agree. agree with that review. So in that case, but I understand we're imagining this hypothetical plan where I can subscribe to a tier that is suitable to my needs. Yeah. I if I try to imagine this hypothetical plan, then I understand. But if I was locked into a tier that required me to upgrade to make it worth it, then I would feel kind of cornered. Like, yeah. oh, I should get, I should upgrade my machine because I'm paying for it already. Yeah. Okay, another pro? Th- this is another point of contention. I think it could be cheaper in the long run because the reality of it is like you're renting this. Well, not really renting it. You're paying money and, you know, what not knowing the costs, but just using that sort of, you know, $2 per $100 retail cost, it could be significantly cheaper. Even if it was, you know, let's say 100 bucks a month, right, for this whole gamut of phone, computer, tablet, Apple Pencil, et cetera. You know, you're paying $1,200 a year for things that if you had to add that all up, that could be very expensive. Although that would sort of... It could be cheaper, but this goes back to the dependency issue that I raised earlier is that I think once you subscribe to this plan, it's very difficult to leave the plan entirely. So yes, it could be Why is it difficult cheaper, to leave though? Because you then have to go out and buy your own new machines. But the thing is you would have had to do it anyways. You're just delaying. You still have the use of the service, right? It's inconvenient. I mean, you have to buy it regardless, though. I don't think that's a It would be inconvenient valid... for me to leave the plan after, like, a year on it. And then I would just, like, stay on it. Why is it inconvenient? I don't. I need you to explain you this You don't more. think it's inconvenient? Like, let's say I rented an iPhone. Do I not have to return the machine? Well, you have to return it, yeah. Yeah, so if I rented an iPhone ten and an iPad Pro and a MacBook Pro and an, iPad and an Apple Pencil, and I become dependent on those items, but I want to leave this plan, then I then have to go out and buy those four items. But you could also argue that you wouldn't even have access to the services of it in the first place. That's the part I don't understand. I think this is our biggest sticking point here is like when when you're a, a subscriber to the whole the whole suite, right? You have access to everything and you're only paying a marginal cost relative to the actual thing that you're paying. And on top of that, you also have more dis- like more money in the bank that you can choose to do whatever you want with it which I think is is critical because at the end of the day, like, are we looking to achieve a goal of creating, which, you know, I think falls in line with this, or are you trying to save money? But I think both generally, like, what leaves you with more money in the bank? Do okay. you see how I, I frame it up that think, way? I still think that you are, you would be making a greater commitment than you realize. It's not, I don't think it's as easy for you to step away from a hardware subscription as it is from Netflix. I think in this day and age, it is. Think about everything's on the cloud. Like, what do you, what do you really need to do? You know, like when you, when you have to change a computer, change a phone, it's so seamless. Okay. Maybe it's because the way we work is different. What I would require as well in my, in the plan, in the tier is someone who backs up all my data and who transfers my software preferences, transfers my working files to a new machine. I come with a lot of okay. data, Th- I think helpful. more than you. Because a lot of I'll, the writing that I, you, what do you mainly do? You write, right? Yeah, I keep, and it's And most of it is in box, but I have Photoshop files and design files. I'm not saying it's not possible. It's just, there is an inconvenience factor for me. Correct. But and I think it's offset by the fact that you're, on a month-to-month basis. I think you just have more money in the bank. Yeah, I think the overall Apple ecosystem is probably something that's most enticing for people. But, I mean, as I think about it, it's, there's so many, yeah, so if you look at Apple's ecosystem, I think that's the most enticing thing about it all, right? You have everything. And 
I think just to round things off, like, I think just to cap things off, maybe tell me what you would envision as your most ideal scenario and okay. what would actually make this you. This is the dream scenario. Yeah, as ridiculous as it may be. Someone from Apple comes to my place of work or home with the new machine or whatever it is, the product that I want, and does all transference of files and software and everything for me. So I don't have to do any of that. And also, I would like the freedom to test new products without it seriously affecting my payment tier. Like I want to be able to try an Apple Watch before I have to like pay another whatever it is, yeah. 25 USD yeah. to my tier. Yeah. And that way I get to take Apple products out for a spin. Yeah. And I honestly like I'm, I'm probably not going to commit to the Apple Watch, but I'd like to try yeah. first. And the Apple Care thing is pretty compelling and insurance. as well. What about Apple Care slash insurance? Yeah, just ease of that. If like I get preference in line, if I assume Apple Care is not going to cost me anything additional. I don't know what the cost is. No, but this just is like you that. Setting up the most yeah, right. Ideal. This is the dream one. Yeah, that it would be all inclusive of. Oh my God, this is such a pipe dream. But like, I don't want to have to suffer damages for water repair. Yeah. This is so unreal. But, but new, sure. Yeah. So yeah. let's say how let's say that you have access to what are all the items you would use? L let's say I had freedom. Um like what, what what items would you use and what would be your value? Like MacBook. I would iPhone. Okay. Let's say I buy into this whole thing. Then I would try the iPhone 10. Even while I said that I don't really desire it, I can try it. Mm -hmm. Um, I would just re-get a new version of my current computer, the 2015 MacBook Pro, still mm. plugging that. I would definitely get a new iMac. Um, the pencil maybe for kicks. You would need an I iPad too then. That's true. But I would. Uh, I don't see how they fit into my life, but let's say I'm just buying into this anyway. Damn, yeah. Then I would play with it. I don't want to carry it around though. Does I mean, Apple sell Cintiq? I don't know what that is. It's a really pro version oh. of the Wacom tablet. Well, why when you have an iPad? Oh, no, I want the one. This is just like hardware dreams from Sharice now. I want the one where you, it's produced by Cintiq and you yeah. you draw on it and you, yeah. I don't know how to describe, All right. describe it any Laptop, further. desktop, phone, iPad, pencil. That's five items. What does that cost you? A AirPods? No. Oh, man, AirPods are really, really solid. No. Anyways, five no. things. No, regardless of the... Five. five things. How much would you pay for that? You mean on a monthly tier? Yeah. Wait, in my pipe dream, I pay nothing, right? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Obviously, I can't pay nothing. Um, Realistically, can I pay 120 That's fair. U.S. a month? I would say between one... I think 120 might be on the low end. I was thinking 150. Yeah, I think 120 is a little on the low end, but. But 120 to have those five things, of which three are pretty high ticket items. Yes. I think that's pretty reasonable. Anyways, for me, uh, I have lesser expectations because, you know, for me, I think. It's you don't want home delivery? That's my best one. Uh, okay, sure. Sorry, I continue. think delivery regardless. What is your I mean, dream? I think the insurance and the Apple Care is probably two of the most interesting things to me. I think insurance in general is something we all think about, but to actually go out and get it is annoying. I think that's one of my biggest pet peeves is, is getting insurance. Um, having the ability to, to get the latest thing because I don't know if it's just me, but my iPhone 10 is already starting to slow down. What? Yeah. So anyways. I think it's just... Anyways, I, I think I, you just operate too quickly. Regardless, I don't, I, whatever it may be, right? Okay. I, I want access to the okay. newest stuff as it happens. And I would pay a higher tier to have first access to it because I can guarantee speed. Okay. Speed and efficiency okay. are the two most important things for me. Okay. Right? Yeah. And, you know, for me, if I could be guaranteed that, I don't need a MacBook, to be honest. I don't, I'm just not, not a fan of it. Um, so I really just need an iPad. A phone, AirPods, watch. Mm, I mean, I'd probably pay 50, anywhere between 50 and 75 bucks. 
I mean, because you don't need computing. Yeah, I have. I I mentioned two computers, which is why I'd be paying a lot more. Yeah. Go. You know what would be great, actually, is if they would also give me enough cloud storage to store all my shit. That'd be part of everything because you would also get Apple Music too, right? Yeah. I'm sure this is somehow something that could be integrated. It's going to cost more. But I, again, I don't, I know you said that I'm tricking myself, but I would like to imagine that I have the freedom to switch to a Pixel or a OnePlus tomorrow. You could. No, I think if I buy into the subscription plan, I eliminate a, a, that feeling of freedom yeah. from the Apple world. And I know that you want me to just admit that I've completely, I'm have completely, i completely drinking the Apple Kool-Aid, yeah. but I still feel that I could switch to a Lenovo and a Pixel tomorrow. Yeah. No conclusive... Does that satisfy? End. Does that satisfy your itch to talk about this, though? I just think it's a really compelling thing to discuss. I mean, I can set up a whole session for you no, if good, you want. No, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. I'll get a... I will find someone at Apple. I'll find someone at Lenovo. Anyway, if you want to talk to Eugene more on this subject so that you can save me from having to talk to him again about it, please hit him up in Slack. Yeah, hit me up. subject this is lighter i think we're gonna agree on this one actually i don't know i came prepared with what i think you're gonna say so the subject is research is being done at american university which is showing and experimenting with the effectiveness of applying game design techniques to journalism american university is a private university located in washington dc and they sort of combined two of their programs, existing programs, Game Lab and School of Communication into a special team called JOLT. With a grant from the Knight Foundation, JOLT has been spending the last couple of years doing different experimentations, working with different newsrooms, creating games that are also news stories at the same time. So an example is this game they produce called Factitious, which helps readers develop the skills necessary for identifying fake news. So they give you like a headline and a snippet of the news, and you can also reveal the source if you want to make it easier for you. And you say like, do you think this is true or false? It was actually really successful. It has 1.1 million plays, 500K users. This is... um, I'll save the editorializing for later. Another game that they created is called Commuter Challenge, and this was in collaboration with WAMU, produced by NPR. It was inspired by the story of a real person in D.C. who lost his restaurant job after train service disruptions made him late three times in two weeks. So the game replicates real D.C. conditions. The cost of transportation, schedules, low-income wages, like how much money you have to spend, and you try to get through the week on your budget and making it to work on time. Mm -hmm. So the overall takeaway that I get is that this is a way for people to make people care. Would you say? I think that's one of the big ones. Yeah, That is one of the big things about making. And and one thing that Joel is actually really clear about, I actually went and read the full report (laughs) because it was really interesting to me. And one thing they're really clear about is not all stories are appropriate for this. They're not suggesting, oh, let's go make all things a game. They're saying that some things can be more impactful if you add what an a multimedia that le- level. Well, I think the commuter one is pretty good because the response from that commuter challenge is that people were able to actually get a sense of the anxiety and the stress that a low-income worker living far away from the city center feels. And I think if you read a piece on that, you don't have, you don't put yourself in the shoes of that person. You might, you might simplify the situation and say, there are enough trains, there are enough buses. But when you actually try, 
when you are that person in in a situation trying to secede, then you can see the difficulties. Yeah. Do you see any downfalls to taking this approach towards engaging people, mm. like gamifying it? Does it yes. reduce oh. the actual importance of the topic? No, I don't think so. Actually, one thing that Joel also does well, I don't know these people. It sounds like I'm plugging them. But most of their games came with a piece as well, like with a traditional prose journalism piece. So it was never like a standalone game, but a piece on the situation and then, hey, go try it out. Like see what it is for yourself. The downside I actually see is not related to like, I knew you were going to say this about simplification of news, the idea of having to dumb things down for people to understand. I don't see that. I'm actually coming around and I think I've changed my stance on it. Oh, amazing. <laughs> but what I do see a problem is that I don't think newsrooms are really capable of getting this done. And In Joel terms does of make like an argument introducing gamification, you mean? Of just thinking through the process of is this the right story for a game? What should the game look like? I think that is the problem that newsrooms are not yet versatile and capable enough, even in terms of skill sets. Like Jolt says, oh, you can use these ready-made tools, but I time don't know if it's does, really that possible. Does the possible. game need to be that complex? Can it be a quiz? You know, does it does a quiz achieve at least a shred of what the ultimate goal is. Because I think, what's that quiz show that's really popular now? I've never played it. Never oh, seen. I know what you're talking about. Never I've never played it as well. Uh, it's like Quizmaster or something. I don't no, know. It's, isn't it called like HQ? Whatever it is. But I think that it's it's just showing. Someone's going to message us right yeah. after this. But, um, but, I think the quiz could work, but it does really depend on the story. And one thing I wanted to read to you is at the very end of their report, they have this toolkit. They call it a toolkit for newsrooms. And it's a couple of steps. And the first one is to identify your story goals, which honestly, the questions they have under this one, like identify your story goals, works for us regardless of whether we're thinking about games mm -hmm. or not. And I mean us as in Macon. Yeah. And it's, why are you telling this story? Is it to inspire empathy, convey information, spark action, persuade, experience a story, explore a system? What do you want the user to do? Share, learn, explore, understand, commit, organize, connect, return. Yeah. Which interactive form is best to tell it on each platform? Yeah, very, very relevant. Yeah, it's so good. I actually wanted to clarify why I've come around to like simplification. Go for it. I think that at the end of the day, like if, if you can't even hook them at all, then there's zero chance of them actually diving in deeper. So even if it's a nibble, even if it's like a small... I don't, I don't like this analogy, but like if it's a gateway drug to more information to something else, that's bad, right? Should I not say it like that? I, um, it's the first thing that came to mind. I, I mean, I think it works as a metaphor. People yeah. use it as a metaphor. It's a gateway towards right. a more profound I think, search. Like for example, again, that commuter challenge game, I, I was playing it and I was starting to think, is this really what it costs? Not to say that I was doubting the source, but that's, those are the questions that it encouraged me to think about, which I think is more interesting for me as a reader, player, than a regular news piece. I found it really interesting, which is why, you know, when, I, when this popped up on my feed, I was like, oh, this is kind of fascinating because it definitely went in tandem with what I just mentioned. You know, like I think it's crazy because, you know, three months ago maybe you would have asked me the same question. I'm like, oh, this is stupid. We should just be disciplined and just do it for the sake of doing it. And now it's like, actually, if if you can't get them interested at all, then it's going to pass them by. And you're going to get you're going to get zero. You're going to move the needle. You're not going to move the needle at all. It's funny because now I now now that you have come around to the other side of the table, I feel the desire within me to fight your original argument, and I don't, I just don't know why that is. This is my original argument. Yeah, of the discipline side. Yes, that's fine. This is yeah because I I was gonna say, but of course, even when you gamify a thing, or, I don't like that word so much. The, Joel actually calls it engagement design, but anyway, <laughs> engagement design. Engagement design. When you make a thing a game, I do think you need to be careful that you are using 
real facts, that your sources are verified equally as much, that there is a second step for a reader to take if they do want to learn more. Yeah, it's not like a movie where this is like this is based off of a true story. But yeah, I'm not. Yeah, finished. I'm not looking. I don't think the purpose is just to create empathy. I don't want a reader to just come away and be like, oh, that sucks, right? Like, you do want a reader to come away and be like, I want to know what I can do to fix this problem or whatever it is. Do you have any... I was actually asking myself if we have any stories coming up. Oh, I was going to ask this exact same thing. Or retroactively, like, what do you think would have been a dope game? I don't know. I, I was still thinking about it. I think something music related with like Sounds of Tokyo or like, you know, maybe it could have been, I'm just making this up. And then maybe it doesn't have that. It's more engagement more than it is engagement with education. It's, hey, maybe what you do is you can take a part of the track and be like, hey, what is the original sound of this? I don't know if that even makes sense. Or like, what what sound is this? Or like identifying Or things. if you could somehow walk through a version of Tokyo and where you walked would play different samples and you could save your path or something like that and you would be like remixing your own exactly sounds of Tokyo and yeah that'd be totally cool and you could just like hey you know what you have to collect run around collecting sounds and then you have let's say you collect 100 sounds you can create your own track or even now that I'm trying to get into this mindset I can see other possibilities like the story we recently did with Edward Barnier talking about how he knows which photo gets what kind of success if you put the player in a scene and they had to frame a photo and it could tell you, I don't know how we'd get this data, but hypothetically, it could tell you like the engagement that you would get from that photo. It but I don't know. Exists. I don't know if it furthers. I, I do think it, you have to be careful. Like not everything needs to be. A game. A game. Not everything needs to be interactive. Yeah. Cap it off? Yeah. If you are interested in learning more about Macon or hearing our stories, exploring membership opportunities, which include exclusive content, a members-only Slack, you can check us out at macon.com. You can subscribe to us on iTunes and all of your favorite podcast apps if you like us if you like making it up you can do us a huge favor by reviewing us which helps give us visibility and you can also share this episode with a friend i'm eugene i'm sharice and this is making it up